I'm very happy to be here uh, with my um, fellow pirates in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, and, um, you know, we just came out of a, a really interesting um, period in Iceland where uh, we managed to secure uh, 10 seats out of 63 in the parliament. Uh, uh, we had um, an incredible fun campaign, very inspirational, uh, and we managed to be able to connect and, um, and, and get the support from people from all walks of life in Iceland, which is so amazing. Uh, you need definitely more women in your pirate party here. <laughs> and you need, please get more diversity. It is so important. Um, and uh, because uh, what we are striving for, what we are trying to offer is um, a completely new way of approaching uh, the status that we are dealing with in our world. And, and um, like so many, you know, I'm full of angst over the situation that is uh, happening much quicker than many of us uh, would like to acknowledge. But we are at a very um, interesting times. One could say that it is dark times ahead. Or what we need to do, and it is our responsibility as individuals, I don't care if you're pirates or not, it is our uh, responsibility as individuals to offer alternatives, to offer a vision of hope instead of vision of fear. And uh, I have, throughout the years that I, I have uh, accidentally gotten into politics, uh, really tried to get people to talk about the future. It's very hard to see the future. And it is an exercise that we need to do both internally and with one another. And we can start with something relatively easy. How would we like, what would you like to do if you would get to be a representative for your country? You know, what are your ethical uh, guidelines? And what would you like to do for your people? Because in the end, uh, we are offering to be of service. We're offering to be an extension of people that trust us. And uh, I've actually done this three times, uh, run elections, and I've created actually two political movements uh, out of nothing and gotten them into parliament. And, you know, the most important thing that we've done when we're working um, together is to create a community, which I sense that you have here in Holland. Uh, and to create um, a profound respect for the people that you're offering to work for. Because, you know, running is sort of like a, a, a very big job interview <laughs> that lasts for a very long time. And the privilege of being given this sort of responsibility is extremely humbling. Uh, when we were running for the uh, elections, uh, the Pirates Now, uh, we made it very clear and we did a lot of things that nobody ever done before. One of the things that we did was that we offered uh, voters a choice by uh, trying to call other parties uh, to go into the elections uh, bound by an agreement in advance about which parties would work together. And Icelanders have been calling for this for a very long time, but the media spun it in a really <laughs> negative way, so they said, oh, this is going to be the coalition of the left parties, which it totally wasn't. But uh, they managed to call it the left coalition, and a lot of people didn't dare vote for this particular bloc that was offering some type of, uh, you know, progressive change. Um, but for me, it was very interesting to experience what happens when you go out there in the elections and you go out there in earnesty and you're not playing the games. Because, you know, deep down, even if people don't dare to vote with their um, sort of common sense uh, to, to, to see through all the crap that they're so used to hearing and they're so sick of it that, you know, the day after the elections they get something entirely different than they were promised. It takes time. <coughs> but I, I firmly believe that running campaigns on integrity and uh, on the instead of trickle-down economics, we do trickle-down ethics is extremely important. Um, 
another thing that we did was, uh, and we actually managed to get some of these parties to meet with us. Uh, they were very upset, even if they talked about uh, like months ago that they were interested in doing sort of a block. Uh, none of them wanted to, you know, show the cards. They're all in poker, <laughs> but we're not. And I think it is very important because if people see that we walk our talk, uh, even at critical moments, that will actually seep in uh, and create a foundation of real trust. Because in the end, politics should be about trust, not games or, uh, you know, fear mongering, power climbing sociopathic uh, realities uh, that, you know, I, I for one am not interested to participate in. Uh, we ran with, um, a, you know, because all of a sudden we became very popular, <laughs> uh, we had to broaden the scope of our policy and uh, we had to do it properly, so we decided to run with uh, five central themes uh, before the elections. Uh, one was, uh, you know, obviously pretty uh, common sense uh, in the wake of the Panama Papers. Icelanders had three sitting ministers uh, that had, uh, you know, accounts in tax havens, and that was a world record. Again, a very sort of depressing world record <laughs> that we have. Um, so one of the themes was how we're going to tackle with all the corruption. And we actually had some... Um, you know, well-defined uh, policies in that regard. And, and many people say that, you know, offering some sunshine into the dark corners uh, eliminates a lot of corruption. Of course, not totally, but transparency is a very important uh, uh, issue and uh, access to uh, information is critical to have informed citizens. Uh, we also uh, created a policy on the healthcare um, issues because uh, 86,000 Icelanders uh, uh, signed a petition demanding that uh, politicians would prioritize money into the healthcare sector. Uh, we ran with uh, the new constitution that we had crowdsourced uh, and actually went into a referendum that was non binding, like the Brexit referendum, but uh, the traditional bodies did not um, dare to implement it, so it is sort of, uh, I don't know, it's like Snow White and we're waiting for the nation to become the prince to wake it up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's uh, deeply depressing that we still don't have the new constitution because in it are very, very important uh, rights uh, and changes. And um, I think, you know, one thing that you could do and I think is important is to go out there and just listen to people. Ask them, what do you want? What do you need? How do you uh, see uh, you know, the future and how would you like to be part of changing it? And uh, you also should, if you would like, uh, to um, focus on the democracy issue. Uh, you know, even if democracy has, direct democracy has pros and cons, all democracy really in the Western world is a sort of a direct democracy. We only get to elect, uh, you know, mostly professional uh, politicians. I don't really what the hell that is and I don't know who they are representing. <laughs> uh, but <coughs> I don't see a lot of professional politicians not in parliament. Uh, so I don't really know who these people are representing. Um, but the most important thing and the thing that gave us a lot of trust was that we just um, uh, weren't trying to be like the others. We're just normal people, you know, I'm, I'm a poet and a you know, web developer and uh, an activist and um, I've never tried to be anything else than I am and I think it is very important that we speak like other people, <laughs> that we don't learn to uh, you know, dress in a certain way or talk in a certain way or behave in a certain way, even if you have to, of course, be uh, decent. Um, it really helped so much to show the Icelandic people that they had people in parliament that were like them. Uh, and so if, if there's any advice that I can give you is just, you know, be yourselves. Don't try to be like anybody else offer a collective uh, shared vision, find your vision. Uh, it is very difficult to run on a platform that is on abstract things. Most people um, 
don't really, they're not gonna vote for you because of privacy. Uh, they're not gonna vote for you just because you want freedom of information. They will have a vote for you if you can wrap it in fundamental rights. And uh, I am a firm believer in democracy. I really think that is the, and uh, Maxim was saying liberal democracy, is that the term? Um, <coughs> I think it's the best format that we have so far uh, to run our uh, communities. Um, but we also put a lot of stress into uh, simplifying our systems so that they actually work for the general public. And in order to do that, you have to have direct ways for people to notify the parliamentarians how to amend laws that no longer work for people. Uh, I as I've been in parliament for eight years, <laughs> I'm one of the... Uh, it's very scary. I have, I'm one of the parliamentarians with the longest uh, work experience in the parliament. <laughs> it's been so much renewal in the wake of the crisis. And um, in that time, I've learned a few things. And you know, I primarily went in there to gather knowledge so that I could um, share it with others. I, like Richard Stallman, said that I was um, a legal hacker. <laughs> And uh, in a sense, I am, but I, I, I see myself rather as a, I don't know, isn't there like some term of uh, being a life hacker? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I try to go inside the system to really see it as a holistic um, entity. And if I see flaws in it, I uh, let everybody know about it. And it's important. Um, you have a good chance. I mean, you, there are unique times here, and you have a really good chance if you can create a narrative that people connect with, a narrative that people feel, hey, they, they are representing me and my values that nobody else is hearing. You know, Gert Wilter, or Gert Wilter, or how you say it, uh, <laughs> uh, he is tapping into a source that uh, uh, is based on people's fear for their future you know, and uh, for their livelihoods. And it's usually the time you either get people to come out and protest or, you know, vote in a really weird way like they did in the United States and they did that also in the UK. But they will be doing it in many more countries. Now, why do you think there is no s sort of crazy right-wing uh, neo-fascist Nazi party in Iceland in power? It's because of us. Because we actually uh, tapped into the same um, fears with empowerment. So we gave people tools uh, to engage and offer uh, solutions that we worked on collectively in our grassroots. And we listened to people. We even spent, I don't know how many, uh, well, probably one man year working on talking with the racists that flocked into our Facebook uh, open uh, political debate uh, forum. Uh, you can't really turn them around, but you have an open discussion and we decided not to um, move the discussion anywhere else. It was a very difficult discussion, there was a lot of disinfo, but you had people there arguing against it with facts and it is very important. So we really try, we, we are fierce fighters for freedom of expression. Because you cannot be selective about it. You cannot have the safe zone or trigger, trigger warnings or whatever. Uh, life is fucking harsh. <laughs> you know, we cannot wrap ourselves in cotton. Uh, and we have to be defiant and strong now to offer, you know, s a listening ear. Try to listen uh, to what people want. Because, you know, I, I've been reading article after article after article, very insightful articles about, um, you know, why are people voting for the extremists, you know, or the populist or the strong leaders that are going to save everything. And, you know, often it's because people feel that they've been forced into some sort of, they have to have opinions that are politically correct that they don't feel comfortable about because the discussion the debates have never come to the place where people feel uh, that their point of view is valuable, you know, or you can't really correct um, unfactual 
you, uh, viewpoints if you never offer the space to have a discussion about it. Um, but so, yeah, so I go back into our campaign. Uh, one of the things we did, we didn't have any money when we ran for the first time. Uh, we had a little bit of money now, so we could actually hire one person, which was really awesome. Uh, and we got a bunch of volunteers from all over the world, uh, both pirates and other people. And of course, it was a, a massive international media circus uh, because we were scoring high in the polls. Um, but like, we really tried to have a lot of fun doing this because uh, uh, and tried to sort of go into every possible place. We went to the old people's homes. We went to the colleges and universities, and we're always ready to go and speak to people. Uh, we even. Uh, like in Iceland, there is this tradition because we have all these geothermal pools. So uh, people go in the morning uh, and uh, in the hot tubs there and, and talk politics. And so we would send pirates there <laughs> to talk with people there. Uh, so we really try to just, you know, use every possible creative way of reaching all sorts of people. Uh, uh, one of the things we also did was we uh, couldn't afford to have an office because uh, it's so expensive to rent now in Reykjavik. And so we decided just to rent the booth in the local flea market. It's very inexpensive, and lots of people gave us stuff to sell <laughs> uh, the first year we were there, so we could actually buy uh, a lot of uh, balloons that we made balloon swords uh, from. Uh, and we bought a, a button machine that we uh, allowed people to bring in their own sort of ideas of buttons and uh, made them for them. And, and just like little things like that. I'm not saying you should get the button machine, but they're really awesome. Uh, <laughs> so much fun. Um, but, uh, um, and it was very helpful when we're trying to be, you know, first, when we first came out, uh, or I came out as a, a pirate, um, you know, people really had so much discussion about the name. Oh my God we cannot vote for somebody that says they robbed somebody at sea. And, uh, but eventually, the irony is that uh, because we started to represent progressive change, that when people, you know, I meet old people, like 90-year-old granny, saying like, ah, yeah, they're pirate. And, and it's, it's beautiful. And, um, and once you reach that, you know, that you get your, like, and, and I heard of families, like entire families coming like the, you know, the young person in the family really started to look into the pirate party because of, you know, the uh, internet natives. And then he had convinced his father, and we actually have one member of parliament that uh, this happened to, uh, like the father had been convinced that he should join the party. Uh, and, uh, and then, they inspired the grandparents and you know you had the three generation coming to the booths and uh, uh, it was really amazing uh, and uh, I think if uh, you don't need a lot of money to run a an awesome campaign you just need a lot of people uh, willing to do the work which is to talk to people that's all you need to do and you have to have a narrative that's easy we trained each other we we would meet and, and try to explain our policy until anybody could explain it. 